so what's my favorite book outside of the bible this is a really difficult question there are so many to choose from i suppose i would say that my favorite book outside of the bible is uh, the history of the decline and fall of the roman empire by edward gibbon it's such a, a magnificent book it's essentially a a history not just of the roman empire uh, but a history of the early church and the theology of the church fathers and um, it's just written in such a, a magnificent style uh, that i always turn to it whenever i'm ne in, in need of any inspiration uh, so it's a book that uh, enlightens it's a book that entertains uh, it's actually a book that i turn to when i'm feeling a bit down i, I want my spirits to be lifted uh, it's a, a book that, that that actually consists of 12 enormous volumes. Uh, so I've got uh, my little abridged version here, uh, which is um, about 974 pages. Uh, so this is the abridged version of the book, but I, I do uh, keep it constantly uh, on my desk and it's just a, an, an amazing work. And, and so it's more for uh, intellectual uh, stimulation and knowledge. Uh, but we read books for lots of different reasons, don't we? We read books uh, for their intellectual content. Uh, we, we read books to be entertained and we read books to be inspired. And occasionally we might discover a book that changes our lives, that totally transforms our lives. And... Um, one such book this is the other book that i want to mention i'm sorry if i'm cheating a little bit by choosing two but th there's a kind of christian and a non-christian so so gibbon was writing from a more secular uh, perspective with his history of the decline and fall of the roman empire uh, but for devotional purposes if you ask me to choose my favorite uh, theology book then i'd say without hesitation that it's the divine conspiracy by my favorite author dallas willard it's uh, this one here dallas willard and The Divine Conspiracy is the only other book, apart from the Bible, that I try to read repeatedly, cover to cover, uh, at least once a year, because I always find something new, a fresh uh, revelation, a new discovery, every time I read it in the light of my more recent experience. And I just find that this book is so uh, nourishing, it's so life-giving, and um, I, I've, I've actually, whenever I read a book, uh, as long as it's not a library book, if it's my own book, I take a pen, a highlighter pen, and I just make all sorts of scribbles and notes. And uh, with this book, The Divine Conspiracy, um, there are several pages that I've highlighted, I've highlighted so much with my highlighter pen that it's actually the bits that I haven't highlighted that are more prominent than the actual highlighted bits. Uh, which I think defeats the, uh, the point a little bit. But um, if, if you read through my copy of The Divine Conspiracy, you'll find, you'll find lots of pages uh, like that. It's just so, just every sentence, almost every word you're just hanging on to. And um, The Divine Conspiracy, what I love about it is that it offers a way of training the mind in the habits of Christ-likeness. And about half of the book is devoted to the Sermon on the Mount. It explains the Sermon on the Mount and what it means to be a follower of Jesus, what it means to live in this new reality of God's kingdom, which Jesus proclaimed and embodied. And so reading this book, uh, this, this book, The Divine Conspiracy, I would describe it as a really immersive experience. I don't read it in the same way that I would read a novel. Um, it's, it's a much more immersive experience. You feel as though you need to inhabit the pages and then the words, they leap out from the page and straight into the heart and into the mind. And, and, they, and, and then the Holy Spirit does the rest and does the work of, of transformation. Uh, so it's just full of dazzling and life transforming insights on every page. And uh, just to give you an example, uh, there's some. Um, there's one section, just a very simple sentence, where Dallas Willard writes, Jesus isn't just nice, he's brilliant. And this was really important for me. 
especially as a, as a young Christian, to realize that Jesus wasn't just a, a, a nice moral teacher, but that he was the firstborn of all creation. He was and is the one in whom all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge are hidden. He is the way, the truth and the life and the light of the world, the light that, illumine, that, that illumines everything, including the world of, 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 of knowledge. And so what I love about the divine conspiracy is that here we have an author who was a, a world renowned philosopher, a leading philosopher. And he was also someone who was deeply committed uh, to being a follower of Jesus Christ. And so Dallas taught me that there's no contradiction between being a serious and credible academic uh, on the one hand and being a passionate follower of Jesus Christ on the other. And that's, that might sound really basic, really obvious to some people, but at the time when I first discovered the book, when I started to read it, when I was about 19 or 20 years old, that connection wasn't obvious to me. And it was Dallas Willard, more than anyone else, who helped me to realize that it wasn't a question of either or. You know, it wasn't a question of either be a committed Christian or be a, a serious academic. It was, it was both and. And so that was really important to me. And the Dallas, Dallas Willard's book, The Divine Conspiracy, really helped me. And I, I look back with great fondness and gratitude uh, on the life and legacy of Dallas Willard. I should perhaps also say that um, I had the, the privilege and blessing of um, meeting Dallas Willard in person on a few occasions. And um, I, I should say that when I was at university, when I was at Oxford, I, I was going through quite a, a difficult period and my faith was on a knife edge. I came within a couple of inches of uh, abandoning my faith altogether. And um, it was actually a chance encounter with Dallas Willard that really rescued me or rescued my faith at the time. And uh, I look back on that moment as a real God-ordained uh, a God ordained experience. Uh, what happened was that I was a bit down in the dumps uh, at, uh, at Oxford at the time. I was trying to write one of my essays and um, I was walking from the philosophy faculty um, through, it was, it was this is Saturday morning, and I was walking through uh, Christchurch, for those who know Oxford, and I, was, I, I just walked past St. Aldate's Church, which is nearby, and uh, as I was walking past the church, I could hear worship music coming from inside the church. And I just went in to have a look to see what was happening inside. And um, the worship music uh, died down. And then up to the pulpit stepped uh, this uh, large, imposing um, preacher who I, I knew absolutely nothing about at the time. It turns out that it was Dallas Willard. And um, he started to speak, and he started to speak about uh, the reality of the kingdom of God in such a profound and, and a simple yet really profound and, and moving way. And it was really life transforming teaching. And I remember being really moved by that. And um, at the end, we had an opportunity just to, uh, to speak to Dallas Willard. And um, uh, we we just explained we, we just exchanged some some pleasantries i bought his book the divine conspiracy and uh, i thought that was it I, I i wouldn't see him again and then fast forward uh, that same summer uh, of, of that same academic year i actually had the opportunity to travel to america with my dad who was uh, on the board of an organization which dallas willard was also uh, a member of so it's a, a bit of a a coincidence or providence depending on your perspective and so they invited my dad to America uh, to attend this board meeting and I'd been nagging my dad for several years to um, uh, to, to, to go to America I really really wanted to go I'd never been before and so my dad managed to get me a ticket uh, to go to America the trouble was that at Newcastle Airport literally the last minute 
Uh, my dad fell uh, quite sick. He, he, he was fine in the end, but he wasn't able to travel. And so I, uh, my, my dad said, well, you've got a choice here, uh, son. Do you want to, uh, to go on your own or uh, you know, do you just want to, um, you know, to, to, to leave it to another time? So I decided to go. Uh, so I went on my own and I flew uh, Newcastle Airport, a bit of a round trip, various different places, ended up in Denver, International Airport being met um, at the airport and um, brought to my uh, to, to, to the board meeting and um, and there I met Dallas Willard who was also there and um, I, I exchanged some pleasantries with him and I was so blessed when he said ah yes hello you're the young man that I met in Oxford so he'd recognize me and uh, I had my, my copy of The Divine Conspiracy uh, that I bought uh, in Oxford just um, earlier that year. So um, I, just had the most, the, I just had the fondest memories of sitting with Dallas Willard in this little log cabin in the middle of the Rocky Mountains, in the middle of nowhere, um, just speaking to, to Dallas Willard about his life and his work and just being so infused and, and inspired. And so he was really someone who lived what he taught and what he preached. And I really admire and respect him for that. So, um, I, I, and I'm really grateful, eternally grateful uh, to God for Dallas Willard, because that chance encounter uh, led me on the trajectory of becoming a, a, a theology tutor. So I, I wouldn't be having this conversation with you now, I wouldn't be uh, doing this video now. Uh, if it wasn't for Dallas Willard and for his book, The Divine Conspiracy. So that's my favourite book uh, by far. And uh, it's really a, a book that I read not just for entertainment. It's a book that has uh, quite literally changed my life. And I thank God for it.